Um, our band, uh, in the past couple years, since... No, I don't know what I'm saying. If you've ever seen our band since I've been directing it, I, you'll, you'll know that I always try to stretch them, try to have them do, you know, the jazz stuff is like fun and familiar for our instrumentation, just makes sense. But I always try to give them some more orchestral, kind of like symphonic, which is hard to do with a group this size. So I'm not trying to set the bar low. It's going to be perfect. Um, but uh, I did, I, I love John Williams. I'm like a huge movie nerd and movie music nerd. And so uh, you'll recognize this from a movie that everybody knows and loves, where a man uh, gets a tarantula crawling across his face and then someone smashes him in the chest with a crowbar. Um, it's, it's a great film with lots of good lessons. Like, don't put a spider on your face. <laughs> um, so enjoy that, and then um, a couple really fun jazz ones. Um, ben, you can make noise so that you're not honking on your first note, please. Yeah. Um, and what's really cool is, uh, band's gonna play, choir's gonna sing, and then we end the show, near the end, we're gonna ask you to sing with us on one song and everybody all together. Just a big, loud, caroly song. Uh, and then the very last song of the show is everybody all together, and you get to hear the band later, not just hello. So.
Tchaikovsky would be rolling in his grave, I'm sure. <laughs> That's okay. Good job, fanboys. Welcome up the corral. Give them a round of applause. Anybody here, like, maybe a Marine next year? Or a prospective family, anything? Oh, good, I see a couple hands. Awesome, sweet. Thanks for coming and seeing what we do. This is our, like, entry-level choir. So if you sign up for choir and you did an audition with me, you're gonna end up here, which is a pretty good place to be, right? Uh-oh, say yes. <laughs> I told you to say yes. <laughs> no, uh, a lot of freshmen, a lot of haven't sung, how many of you haven't sung in the choir before? Yeah? Wow, that's more than I expected. I should be doing better. I'm just kidding. Um, so one of my goals with them, this group, was to get them singing something a cappella, which means no accompaniment, by Christmas. Which is a little ambitious, but I don't know any better. So, uh, that's the first piece called Deck the Hall. It's, it's all them. Uh, so, and enjoy that. And then, I just gave them a couple fun songs this time. So they're both super fun. Enjoy them both. Uh, the second one is pushing it, I would say, for their level. There's some really tough rhythms and some cool harmonies in there. So enjoy.
corral, huh? So we like to give you some variety. So the next couple things, a um, uh, group here comprised of, I think, is everyone correct in here? Samuel, James, Ryan, oh, I didn't realize when I made this Preston was playing. Hi Preston. <coughs> Preston's playing too. Uh, they're gonna do a fun kind of rock blues thing. Oh, I'm playing piano on that, I should remember. Um, and then Arthur's gonna play uh, not that song, but a different one. Because what I do to Arthur is, is kind of mean. It's like a week before the concert, I'm like, hey, you wanna play solo? He's like, okay. So he told me a song and he changed his mind. It's gonna be awesome no matter what. I think it's Sleigh Ride, right? Where'd you go? Sleigh Ride. He's gonna do Sleigh Ride. So. And is Madeline singing this one? Let's see if I can remember how to play it. I've changed the song that I'm going to be performing. Instead of Jazzy Jingle Bells, it's an arrangement of Sleigh Ride by a guy named Andrew Gentile. Now, how many of you guys have listened to Sleigh Ride before? By a show of hands. A lot of people, right? Now, you'll know there's a part in the song where, if I can demonstrate it for you. Sorry about that. You'll hear the... Uh,
And there's a clock there, isn't there? Yes. Now, can I ask something of you guys? Can you, while I'm playing this here song, can you guys do that clap for me? So, let's practice one time, okay? So, you'll excuse me one second. Here is Sleigh Ride by Andrew Gentile. teach beginning guitar. So for a lot of these students, or for some of them, back in August, they had never played an instrument before, so they've come a long way. Um, so I'm really excited because back when I was in eighth grade, my mom forced me to learn guitar. And I really didn't like it, but my parents were big on music. Um, so she forced me to learn guitar, and I told her, I'm never going to use this. <laughs> And fast forward a decade and a half, I'm teaching guitar, so... Yeah, so kids, listen to your moms, because they can see the future. Um, so, on the back of your uh, pamphlets, you'll see uh, angels from Realms of Glory, as well as Heart the Herald Angel Sing. So as we perform these, uh, these songs, I invite you to worship together with us. So our first one is going to be Jesus Messiah. <laughs> Angels from the Roman Empire.
I don't know, I think it's a really soothing sound. So we hope you enjoy this and let's worship um, with this hymn.
now while the band gets up and makes some hunks and squeaks. So you just like stretch your legs, say hello, and you'll know when you're supposed to sit back down. You'll hear, trust me. <laughs> Thank you. 
I'm here to do three things tonight. The first one is to solicit a round of applause for Travis Kerr. You, you notice, and, and you can, he alluded to it, but he, he teaches choir and band. And if you were here last weekend, drama and a, in a class we call stagecraft. Right, that is a talented man right there. We are blessed to have him, so thank you, Travis. Now, the second thing um, I usually do um, this evening is um, tell you about an offering that we have. Um, we usually take an offering for our, uh, a Christmas gift for our teachers. Uh, so as the baskets um, come around, uh, feel free to drop something in there. And if you came unprepared tonight, uh, just know you can drop off a check um, if you feel led to contribute to that. Um, and the third thing I'm here to do tonight is to introduce uh, the next song, uh, which is called Jesus, Light of the World. Now, to introduce that song, I want to tell you a story. Uh, two weeks ago, um, I was hanging out with one of my good friends uh, who lives two blocks from here in this neighborhood. And I was asking about his eighth grade daughter because he's thinking about bringing her here. And he said, yeah, you know, he's telling me all about her. He goes, you know, she's doing uh, student leadership and, you know, all kinds of fun stuff at the school. But, you know, that you wouldn't believe it. He goes, you know, she's planning. She he was planning for Christmas events at the school. And she was told that she can't do that. No Christmas at the school. So what does she want to do? She goes, all they wanted to do was wear those hats, Santa Claus hats, at the school. <coughs> And he said that they, they told her no, school in this neighborhood, because it was offensive. Right? And this is uh, a true story. Okay? And I can, I, can, I, I can think of, you know, a thousand different ways that I think people find, you know, Christmas offensive. When I lived in the Midwest, everyone had a nativity scene, yes, in front of their Christmas tree, but life-size in their front yards. Right? It was, it was they were big. And um, and I still I still have one, but it's not it's not the real statues. It's the um, it's the blow up version. You know, and I every year I blow that thing up, and I wonder if God is mad at me about that. You know, because Joseph Joseph has a hard time sometimes. You know, sometimes he's you know, and the wind's getting up in the back, and you know, um, and. Little baby Jesus, you know, there's a light that's under him. And so it's nevertheless the scene. And when we lived in the Midwest, like people, people used to destroy uh, nativity scenes in people's yards. Why? Because it's offensive. And I'm here tonight to say that before baby Jesus becomes a delight, that he is offensive. That... Right, and I think he's offensive as a baby coming into this world um, for two ways. Two ways, probably a hundred different ways to people. But number one, the biggest one is that he's unneeded. Right, to think that the God of the universe, the omni-everything God, the omni-benevolent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-good, all-giant, massive, good God, who, who we know... Um, came to this earth as a baby, right, from heaven to this place, right? And so if he came from another place that's perfect and good and right to this place, it must mean this place is messed up and that we need him, right? And everyone in here knows that that's true, that we look in the mirror and we look at the world and we watch the news at night and we know the world is messed up and that we're part of it, that we do need Jesus Christ. Um, and I think the second reason why uh, baby Jesus is an offense to the world is because it's impossible what happened. Um, it's impossible to think that, that the God of the universe would stoop down to become a baby. <coughs> right, in, the, in the womb of a teenage, unmarried girl. Right? The economy of the spiritual realm, like, gods don't do that. Right? Not only that, you, know, you think about it, like, baby Jesus had to have his diapers changed. Right? Think of the infinite lowering of God himself 
to do this, right? To be, to have his diaper changed, to be fed. Right? He had to be fed. That's humiliating. That's impossible. God would not do that. Right? And not only would he do that, but as he grew, right, he made himself vulnerable. He made, he made himself killable. Right? And as the Bible says, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. Not just any death, but the worst death that we all could imagine. The death um, on the cross. Um, for us. Because we need him. And it is possible. Um, and that's why uh, the Bible says, Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. That at the name of Jesus Christ, right, finish, with, finish it with me. Every knee shall bow. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, this next song is Jesus, light of the world. The reason he's the light of the world is because we're not. And we need him. So take it away, my friend.
Mrs. H, didn't you used to do that every year with your girls' choir? That was like a bring, um, making it up? Yeah. I missed that song. It's a good one. Um, advanced choir is going to sing you a couple in a row here. This first one is a traditional Irish carol, but what I love about it is it, it does that thing that a lot of great Christmas music does, it puts two things together, right? It puts, like Mr. Harris was saying, the God of the universe into this humble package. It tries to do that same thing musically, and it also has happy and awe. It has both things, so enjoy. Nope. We're just going to switch it up and do Wexford because I was wrong and I introduced the wrong song. <laughs> you all look pretty, pretty caught off guard over there. <laughs> That's a lot of confused sadness, folks. <laughs> Sit still, don't make any noise. Just hang tight.
Thank you for asking me what song we're about to do, because I was about to make a train wreck happen. Um, please, please, please sing loud on the next song. The words are in your program. You know all the songs, I promise. I want to see how much of that new acoustic paneling we can shake off of the roof. If you would help.
just he just told me he's not introducing me. <laughs> My name is Annie Nelson, um, and this is Corinne. Hey, this, is, um, this is Annie Nelson and Corinne. <laughs> Too late. Um, we are here to talk a little bit about the next song. The next song is based uh, on Mary's response to uh, the angel Gabriel when uh, he came to talk to her uh, about having a baby. And, um, and then also the Magnificat, her song that she uh, sang when she went to tell Elizabeth about it. So we're going to start with Corinne reading the scripture from Luke 1. The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born, and will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative, Elizabeth. Even she has conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her who is called childless, for nothing will be impossible with God. See, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, because he has looked with favor on the humble condition of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, because the Mighty One has done great things for me, and his name is holy. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear him. He has done a mighty deed with his arm. He has scattered and proud because of the, of the thoughts of their hearts. He has toppled the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has satisfied the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering his mercy to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he spoke to our ancestors. Thank you. Mary said yes. She said yes to the most intimate relationship with her Messiah. He grew underneath her heart. She said yes to the magnificent offer to bring the Savior of the world into the world. She glorified and rejoiced in God for the unique opportunity to mother the Messiah, to mother God in human form. She knew that God had done great things for her. She knew that she would be seen as blessed as she was. Mary said yes to ridicule, to side-eye, to unearned disdain. She said yes even when she knew that yes could ruin her relationship with the man who had promised himself to her. Her yes led to her fleeing home as a refugee twice. Her husband died, leaving her a young widow. She watched her beloved eldest son die brutally in agony. When Mary said yes to God, she knew that it would be a hard road, but I wonder if she knew how difficult it would actually be. When I said yes to Jesus, I didn't know that the climb would be this steep. I bet you didn't know that either. When you said yes to Jesus, what valleys you would go through. The song you're about to hear includes Mary's line in, in Latin, uh, I am the Lord's servant. And to be God's servant implies humility, trust, and obedience. It was a title her son would carry as well, the suffering servant prophesied by Isaiah centuries before. When we see trouble in this world, when we see how broken and damaged our society is, it is so tempting in our frustration to wave swords around and claim to be God's warriors, but what if, what if we said yes to being humble servants? Mary trusted that God would set 
her world right. She lived in a time and a place of horrendous violence and injustice. She lived among suffering people who had no way out of the trap that poverty and corruption had caught them in. When she sang her song of praise to the Lord, she gloried that he would bring down rulers from their thrones, but lift up the humble, fill the hungry with good things, but send the rich away empty. And he would do it through her and her yes. Mary had a role in God's mighty plan to bring salvation to humanity, and that plan meant that she would live a painful life. Her suffering wasn't a sign that she had been forgotten. It was the cost of her yes, and it was worth it. Dear servants of God, we, who, like Mary, have said yes to walk in the way of her son, we pause in these dark days of December to glorify Emmanuel, God with us, who entered the world so that he could show us how to live now and forever. When he was here, he suffered. No place to lay his head, and he sweated blood the night he prepared his soul for the cross to bear the sins and judgments of the world. In this season, you might be walking through deep hurt, or perhaps you are carrying someone else's hurt. We bear each other's burdens. And painful days can feel so draining, so useless, so discouraging, when we are in pain, we might be tempted to think that God forgot or doesn't care. We might be tempted to think that God doesn't love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, a son who came into the world through Mary's pain, a son who chose to be a suffering servant so that those who believe in him may have eternal life. I don't think that suffering in and of itself is good. There will be no suffering in eternity. But in this world, we will have trouble. And through it, God will glorify himself. And he will form us into the people he has created to be, his image bearers. As the choir sings Mary's words, let's think about saying yes to being God's servants to joining his work of glory and salvation. Saying yes to God is about a moment of salvation, but it's also something we need to say to him every day as we choose to put him above ourselves. Mary knew herself to be blessed to be Jesus' mother. Every one of us is blessed, for we have been invited to be God's children. May we pray along with Mary's song. The Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. Amen.
Okay, we're down to the last two. So, I'm not gonna uh, have any long spiel, but I just wanna say, these last two songs are very purposefully chosen. The first one, um, which you might have heard some version of somewhere, is an invitation to those of us who have heard the Christmas story, read it, we sing the song, whatever, and then you miss it. Right? Everything that Andy was saying, everything that Mr. Harris was saying, you, you hear all that and it's like, you missed it. So this song is an invitation to those, those of us who have and do miss it to not miss it. Okay? Um, and then the last song is just victory. So enjoy it. <laughs>
thanks again for spending your time with us. I appreciate it. The students appreciate it. So does Jesus, just for the record. <laughs> One clap for Jesus.
Christmas season. Goodbye.